when I initially heard some of them, I was just like, I couldn't believe my ears. I was like, what? This is just wrong. All wrong. You know? So it's that dramatic, the difference between what they're saying and what you experienced? Mm -hmm. Just baffling? Yeah, completely. Completely and totally. Yeah. Honestly, just everything that I heard, uh, the ac accusations being made, I was just thinking about, like, this is nuts. Like, it just seemed insane to me, honestly. He is not that guy. He has been painted in a very unfair way that does not have any approximation to reality. Okay, so Paula, so tell me, how did you meet Manson? And I know you were dating Trent at the time. You were living with Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Tell me how that came I was, out. I was there part of the week. I was there yeah. part of the week. I, was, oh. I wasn't absolutely camped out there, but I, was, <laughs> I, had, my, I, I had my own apartment um, pretty, pretty close by, and then I was there you know, several nights a week. So, um, yeah, so Trent had discovered Manson in Florida and uh, decided to have him come out and probably to work in the studio a little bit because the studio was in the living room of the house. And uh, so he flew out. And the first time I met him, he was there with, um, with Missy Romero, which was his girlfriend. Uh, so he and Missy showed up at the house, and uh, that was the first time I met him. What, uh, what was your impression of him, your first impression? Do you remember? Did he make much of an impression? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was very quiet then like not much has changed honestly <laughs> he was very quiet kind of reserved you know he had eyebrows back then <laughs> he had eyebrows does he shave his eyebrows i don't even know uh, pretty frequently yeah i think yeah. that's the case right, so okay right. so you met him and he and trent as i understand it they worked together at that house on they did manson's debut album um well actually sure. i think at one point kind of early on trent had him do um backup vocals uh for a song from his broken album which yeah that's what he's there for initially and then then trent went on to like produce uh the antichrist superstar album but you know so i think he just mainly had brian out just to kind of feel him out a little bit and get to talk to him some more and hang out and decide what they were going to do make some plans for the future you know Right, right, because uh, actually Manson's debut, big debut album was going to be produced was, by Trent's label, record label, right? Co correct, correct. And so, and when he came out to L.A., it was not like he stayed in a hotel and just came to the house and visited. He used to stay in the guest room, so he would stay just the room adjoining the kitchen. So I would definitely have to say that I, I had a lot of contact with him, you know, obviously back then, because he was right there, you know? Couldn't make it to the kitchen to get something out of the fridge without bumping into him, essentially, so... <laughs> for, for, for people who always thought that like you know well oh you probably just like ran into him at a couple parties or something it's like no no not quite it's like no we all were kind of stuck in the same space together for a, a minute there you know okay so you uh so you met manson and you were dating trent and mm -hmm. then you and trent ended up breaking up we'll talk about that perhaps later and okay. when was the next time that you saw manson so the next time that i actually ended up seeing him and this would have had to have been something in the range of either more or less about a year after Trent and I had finally, finally broken up. And, uh, well, I was modeling and I was modeling in Los Angeles at the time. And I had been out on a casting for, I knew it was for a music video and it was for a director known as Matt Rolston, who actually has some really, really great, all uh, credits under his belt. Like he was doing stuff for Madonna and things like that. So, uh, I went to a casting and, uh, got hired for the casting. And the next time I bumped into Manson was, literally at the video shoot, you know, it was like, you know, six in the morning, you know, sitting in your underwear and makeup chair. And I like, like look to the side. I'm like, what are you doing here? You know? <laughs> and that was how many years after, or how much time had passed since you had seen him at Trent's? Oh, maybe not that. Well, it, okay. So after I'd seen him at Trent's, you know, he actually went on to be the opening band for Trent's tour. So I used to like see him regularly, you know, because okay. I would, when Trent was on the road, uh, I would fly out and see him play shows. And so, you know, Pretty frequently, I would see, obviously, Manson would be there because he'd be the opening band. And a lot of times, you know, once you've seen a concert once, you've seen it maybe twice, three times, that's enough times for seeing a concert because it's kind of the same every time. And uh, so, you know, I would just chill around backstage and, like, wait for Trent to get done so we could get on with doing whatever we wanted to do. But I would end up hanging out with him backstage and stuff, too, because he would be done. They'd be done with their show, you know. And uh, Trent would be on stage, you know. So I would see him kind of throughout the downward spiral tour was when I would see him throughout at, at that point in time. So I don't know. It was probably um, like, you know, probably close to a year, you know, for of a gap before I bumped into okay. him to the video shoot. 
it was amazing. It's amazing that you were around in, in such close proximity to these guys during such an iconic period in rock music history. Okay, so yeah. so uh, you and Manson after you after you and Trent break up, uh, you and Manson run into each other on uh, the set of uh, Long Hard Road Out of Hell. You had mm -hmm. been booked for for this modeling job, and so you're actually mm -hmm. in that music video. But then you started dating. I guess was that kind of immediate? It was. It was. Um, I think. So I have to admit this, this is kind of embarrassing and funny, but um, <laughs> when I first met him uh, at Trent's house, you know, I kind of like had this kind of vibe, like I, for some reason, I sort of felt like weird and kind of mean towards him. But I think I realized what that is. It's like, I, I used to do it in like elementary school. I think like boys I liked would be the boys I was mean to, I think, because I just sure. didn't like, I didn't like admitting like that I liked somebody or something. But right. um, yeah, I, after when, when him and Trent would be hanging out, like at first I thought like, well, maybe I kind of don't like him because. Trent and him go out to titty bars or something like that. But then it's like, nah, well, I don't know, whatever. Because I thought he was a bad influence on Trent, as if Trent needed bad influences, right? <laughs> like, that's that's the beautiful part, you know? It's like all, like, as if he needed, like, you know, some guy to come and come along and get him to, like, you know, misbehave, right? But I, I just think it was funny that I was, like, you know, looking for anybody to, except for him to blame, I guess, you know? But anyways, you know, it's, we do that, scenario. we do that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's common, it's yeah. own up to it, okay. Yeah, I can at this point in my life, yeah. So, but then, and then when we uh, met up and reconnected at the, at the video shoot, it was kind of strangely kind of immediate, because I actually, I think one of the first things I said to him was I apologized for how mean or how kind of less than friendly I had been, because I, I was, I felt like I was, could have been nicer, you know, and I just said, oh, you know, I'm really sorry from the past, I wasn't that friendly, I didn't mean to be. And then we just kind of started talking, and... Uh, Okay, so you started dating Manson, uh, Brian. And by the way, mm -hmm. I'm going to call him Brian some just because I'm trying to humanize you him know what? more. So. You know what? Honestly, like, I I actually always called him Brian. Always. That even did. even when I, when I first met him, well, because he was Brian when I first met him. And uh, it was funny to me because when we were at the video shoot, I like Brian, you know? Well, I think let, let's go with Brian just because one thing I'm trying to do one thing I'm trying yeah, my to mom, do she's always is, like, your friend Brian Warner's on the phone, you know? Well, one thing I'm trying to do is get people to see that there is a human being behind the scary oh. makeup and stuff. So I think yeah. that's fine, yeah. Colin Brian. Okay, so how how long would you say that you dated Brian? Kind of in a three to four month range, honestly. Yeah, like it wasn't terribly long, but I think the thing that happened really between us is that we were both workaholics. And I, I had actually, pr prior to actually even when he and I hooked up, I had been in, in negotiations with an agency in Paris and I was like setting up a trip to go over there to work. And the time had kind of come and gone already because I was staying back in LA longer than I was supposed to. And I had put them off a couple times and I could basically, I reached the point I couldn't put them off anymore and I had to go to work. So I went to work and you know, he stayed, we both stayed in work mode. And when we went our separate ways, there was no hard feelings. Obviously we both just had things we had to do, you know? Right, right. I understand. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, sort of how your your relationship evolved and everything. I mm -hmm. was just wondering, though, because I was just I wanted that stated because I want people to know that you didn't you didn't just date him for a hot minute. It was oh, no, 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 a one no. night encounter or a several no. weeks relationship like mm -hmm. it was a no. it was a no, no, it was a relationship. It was a significant relationship. And, and let me be clear about this as well. Um, so at the time that we were hanging out, um, I had been staying with my parents because I had had an apartment in Los Angeles, but I let go of it because I was out of town so often. I was like going to Italy for two months and it kind of seemed like pointless to pay rent on an apartment that I was never in. So I had let that go. So because of that, I was staying with my parents when I was in town, which put me, you know, it was like about 40 miles outside of Los Angeles, but I had to commute to LA and Hollywood every single day. And with LA and Hollywood traffic, it was like often like a huge drag, right? Because, you know, it should be a 30, 45 minute drive, but it can become two, two and a half hours easily when it wants to because the 101 freeway, you know, SoCal has bad traffic. So uh, basically he had just said, you know, why don't you just like stay here? It's okay. So I, I, I was probably staying at the house with him more times than not. Okay. And so we've got. A so we weren't just like, we weren't just like in a, like, you know, light kind of sort of dating situation. No, I basically kind of lived there most of the time, you know? Because exactly. it's easy for me to go to work in the morning that way. Then I didn't have to, like, you know, get on the freeway of doom for two and a half hours, you know? <laughs> exactly. So. No, so we, what we've got here is we've got a, a four-month relationship where you are seeing him constantly a, a lot. Mm -hmm. you're, you're basically more or less, you know, living yeah. there, like you said. Mm -hmm. And also... It, it wasn't just that you knew him for four months, as we've already established. You I had knew known him, him for long, for long before time. that. 
in yeah. lots of situations and circumstances, Absolutely. you had seen him messed up. You had seen you had you know seen him yeah. around friends putting an album together. You'd probably seen him with other women, like you said with Missy, right? So you absolutely mm -hmm. observed a lot. So yeah, describe for us then. Tell me, tell me what based on your experience, what is it like to be in a romantic relationship with Brian with Marilyn Manson? It's very nice, actually. He's He's not what people would think he is. He's very, very sweet guy, honestly. Very, very nice, very quiet, reserved, intellectual. When we first were, we first got together, like basically our thing was like, we would always like find books that we thought the other one would like to read. So we would like be like the book club, basically, you know, because we're both a little bit kind of a nerdy, I guess. So we would like find books we liked and we both read them at the same time and talk about it afterwards. I think I can think of one. The first one I think we ever read together was Geek Love. What? What did uh, you yeah. read? Uh, what? Yeah, it's called Geek Geek Love. Oh, that I've was never the, even heard the first of that. book. I should read. Yeah, it. it was the first book that we had actually read <laughs> together. Yeah. Okay. Geek but love. um, you know, and yeah, Geek Love, and you know, we would just hang out. Sometimes we would foray, go out to the Rainbow Bar, and go like dance a little bit to whatever they were playing there, silly '80s music. Um, you know, we just were normal people. Well, and, okay, and so you said that he he's a, he was a sweet guy. He was very much he, so. he was a nice guy. We never fought. I can tell you that we never fought. Not even when we broke up did we fight because it was just a mutual. We had to do what we had to do, you know, like life called, you know. And you said he was you know, gentle, sweet, and these are things, Very by the way, so. that you know, as you know, that some of his other exes, like Rose McGowan. Dita and oh, so yeah. forth have confirmed but okay so here's my question to just to get very to get very specific because these are the allegations that have been made against of course. him of course um was he you said he never fought but uh, was he ever violent abusive scary any of these things no not even uh i i just i honestly i don't think he has it in him and, and not with women, at least. Uh, I know that people have said in the past, well, that, you know, he's gotten like handsy with like people in the band, especially on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that there needs to be a differenti differentiation made there because there's been many occasions when other people, including Trent on stage, has done things like break guitars almost on people and stuff like that. And when people are on stage, they're putting on a show and people are paying for the show yeah. and they're doing things that are meant to like entertain people. And they're basically having to fulfill the image that they've created for themselves, you know? So I, I, even when people talk about, well, you know, they know that, some, that there was an occasion when Manson maybe supposedly was abusive with a band member on stage. It's like, well, that's kind of part of the show usually, guarantee, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, Especially uh, when it's a rough act like, like Manson's the performance. Yeah, I mean, it's true. They, I mean, there was definitely an element of part of why people liked them. It was like taboo. The shock factor was there. You know, teenagers went there because their parents didn't want them to be there, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, that it's just it goes back to the same thing, like when Ozzy Osbourne supposedly biting the heads off of bats and stuff. You know what I mean? Same thing. Never happened. So, uh, sorry, one second. He, he's a very soft spoken person. Honestly, he's soft spoken and he's not an aggressive or easily angered kind of person whatsoever. I will totally I'm like, I can vouch for the fact that out of the two of us, I'm the more assertive. So I initiated everything, you know. Like, he's not the kind really? of person that would make the first move on you because really? he's, I think, a little bit too fundamentally shy and self-conscious to do that, actually. Okay, because, yeah. because I talked to, I don't know if I, I don't know if I need to keep, I want to keep this in there or not, but I'm going to tell you. I talked to Dan Cleary. You know, Dan Cleary is one of the oh, men, right. former mm -hmm. assistant mm -hmm. who has said that he observed Manson being verbally, emotionally abusive and all of that. And he claimed okay. to me, he told me that Manson flirted hyper aggressively with women you're saying that he wouldn't even make the first move well or actually i could see that there could be something that could be him being in public facing mode mm. because so he was shy he, with women in his personal life generally i think what uh, the differentiation i think i'm trying to make is like it's one thing if you're like out in a crowd and you're at a party where you're supposed to be as a professional and i can totally attest to having experienced this myself uh as a model like we would have you know, things would be going on. It'd be something you, you didn't want to attend because you were networking, right? So you turn on your public face and you go out there and, you know, if you're like a guy and you're schmoozing the crowd, of course you have to flirt with girls. That's part of the deal. The same way, like, if I go to a party like that when I was a model, I would have to flirt with everybody too because that's kind of part of your job, you know? Right, but, right. But, but it's different because if you're flirting with these girls, like, at a party somewhere because it's, like, that's who you're supposed to be, you, you're trying to, like, be you know, popular and people want to, you want people to pay attention to you and you want to meet the right people because you're in Hollywood. That's different than actually flirting with somebody in the way you would because you want to get involved with them. 
Right, right. So do you understand you... what I'm saying, right? Oh, no, no, I do. Like, I do. I totally There's understand. that one kind of precocious kind of thing, but it's because you're putting on your public face. It has nothing to do with who you are you're saying or what you not... really are interested in. Without putting words in your mouth, but I'm going to put words in your mouth, but tell me this okay. is what you mean. You're saying he's not right. predatory. Uh, he's the opposite of predatory. I, like I said, I, I feel like out of the two of us, I was certainly the, the, the more assertive of the two and the person who initiated things. And I always felt like he's the kind of person that would have that moment of hesitation or pause because mm -hmm. he's like a self-conscious person and not an assertive, aggressive person. Like, like I said, the, the least rapey guy I think I've ever known, you know? The least, wow. The least, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, honestly. but I, I mean, that's, yeah, that's something because, you know, one of the things that people say who, who've been trashing him the last couple of years keep saying is, Oh, he's such a creep. He's such a creep. It sounds no. like you're saying he's the opposite. No, he's very, he's very shy. He's very self-conscious and shy. He really is. And uh, that was just, I, I can only speak to my experience. And that was how he always was around me. Very, very considerate, very conscientious. Uh, he's the kind of person he opens doors for you, you know, stands up at the table when you want to get up and go somewhere and come back, you know, stands up when you get back, that kind of thing. Wow. He's got nice manners. He was obviously raised, raised well, you know, but he's a good boy. Well, he had a close relationship with, with his mom, apparently. And, you know, honestly, it showed, mm -hmm. you know, you could tell like, you know, that he was, he was the product of, of a family that loved him, you know? Yeah. So some, a lot has been said about his supposed sexual tastes and predilections and the accusers mm -hmm. have claimed like Evan Rachel Wood and, uh, and others that he's a sadist. He's an extreme sadist and that he enjoys not only extreme S and M and bondage and stuff, but like he enjoys inflicting that non-consensually on women, that kind of stuff. Did you ever ex have any experiences like that with him? No, I did not. I'm sorry. Like as you're talking, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I'm sitting here. I'm like sighing. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's, I, mean, like, it's... <laughs> I can't help it because it's just like it's so completely and totally diametrically opposed to anything I experienced with him whatsoever and like he's not a leave the lights on kind of person and as a matter of fact so I mean it's just he's not and I think he said you know, that too in an interview actually that he doesn't like the lights on so he's gets confirmed no 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 he, he does not he's not like one of those like leave all the lights on and, and do things in, in ways that feel exposed kind of he's like one of those like uh, turn off the lights and get under the covers kind of people so without making him sound too boring, he sounds pretty vanilla is what you're saying. He's not a kinky guy. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess it's all relative, right? But he's not, I, never at any point in our situation was there any kind of um, uh, BDSM or sadism or anything like that. Um, I, no, nothing he's like not that occurred between us. God in the flesh. No, 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 no. I have to say, like, I could probably say that the the most injury I would have ever experienced like from any kind of physical interaction with him was that he and I were both very, very thin at that time. Uh -huh. Like when I was working, I think I weighed like 107 pounds and he was just like skinny too. And it's like, yeah, at worst, it's like, you know, you get some, some bruises, but that's what happens when people that are like, you know, <laughs> awkward and skinny and have no body fat are bumping around together. Right. Is you're going to end up like a little bruised up, but that's not on purpose. It's just, it's like two people that are built like coat hangers, you know, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> You know, but it was, there was never like any like erotic intent behind it. It was more like, it was more like we were just two people that are like all arms and legs and no body fat. I, I mean, that's just kind of the, the long and the short of it. No, we didn't do any kind of S&M or anything crazy like that. No, I, I thought there that was, was hilarious. never an element of that. If, if there, if there had been an element of it, it probably would have been, I would have been the one who wanted to do it first of all, but it was not really something that was on, on the table. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was just that we were boring or so much that we both worked so much all the time, honestly, that we just had a pretty tame life together. And, you know, we both were at work nonstop. And then we would like enjoy the fact that we could like come back from work and just hang out and be regular people together, you know? Well, I mean, you know, that's exactly what Rose McGowan said in her book. You know, she's, uh, she, she was engaged to him. And I know we're going to talk about her in a minute because he actually dated her <laughs> after you, right? But, but that's what she said. She mm -hmm. said they had this, this surprisingly placid, kind of boring, you know, if you want to put I, it that way. I think way, a lot of people don't realize how much, um, when you're in the public eye and your image is mainly what you're using to make your living off of, which both he and I were both doing essentially at that period in time, you know, when you're done wearing all the makeup and you're done having like, tons of people around you, you want to go and get to like a place where you can just wipe off the makeup and have it be like an oasis where you can relax, you know? And that's really honestly like that relationship for me, I was under a lot of stress too. It's like, it's no joke. Like modeling is very, very stressful. Like It's very competitive. Uh, it's very physically demanding and it's also like very kind of emotionally taxing, honestly. 
And that was the thing that in a lot of ways, I think kept me sane and stopping from burning out was actually knowing that at the end of the day, I could go home and hang out with him and everything would be cool because he was like very supportive, very kind, you know, and we could just go home and be ourselves and be, be normal and feel okay. It sounds like you're what you're saying is that these allegations that a number of women have made about him being a monster, him being abusive, uh, kinky, all of these things, they, they're they they're not ringing true for you. In fact, it's the opposite. Not not at all. Uh, I, when I initially heard some of them, I was just like, I couldn't believe my ears. I was like, what? This is just wrong. All wrong. You know? So it's that dramatic, the difference between what they're saying and what you experienced? Mm -hmm. Just baffling? Yes, completely. Completely and totally. Yeah. Honestly. He is... Just everything that I heard, uh, the ac accusations being made, I was just thinking about, like, this is nuts. Like, it just seemed insane to me, honestly. And I, I feel like, you know, since the, the accusations occurred and I decided to come out and talk to you the first time, I do not regret in any way, shape, or form the fact that this whole time that I have vehemently said that he is not that guy, you know, because I, I think as people will see, as time has gone on and, and cases have dropped away and, you know, and things have come to light that like make it clear that guess what? He really isn't that guy. And it's like, I meant it a hundred percent before and I still mean it now. You know, it's like, that is, he has been painted in a very unfair way that does not have any approximation to reality. And you've been consistent in saying that you have been saying that back when yeah. it was, it was deeply unpopular with, with everyone. Mm -hmm. And before, you know, Ashley Morgan Smith line had recanted or, or before the, sure. the lawsuit, before any of it, I mean, you were you sure. know, very early. Um, okay, so you and Manson dated for a while. Do you want to talk about more about why you broke up? Or I think, I mean, I think you said things were not in your life. They were not really coherent. We were both busy. really, really busy. But, you know, it's like, that's a funny thing. You know, what does it they say about like hindsight being like 2020 and all that good stuff? You know, as time goes on, I think maybe this is what you're supposed to do when you grow up is like, you know, reflect on things and see what kind of really happened. I realize that now when I think about it, uh, when we were together, Manson and I, I was so emotionally unavailable. I mean, I enjoyed the time I spent with him and we were good together. But at the same time, I think I was too distant in general. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was another thing, too, I think that had crossed my mind, honestly, when Manson and I had gotten together is I was sitting there and I was thinking about it. And I was like, wait a minute, would I really can I really like deal with the thought of having a boyfriend who's on tour all the time again? Because it's hard. I it's bet. really hard. And it was like enough to make me kind of stop and kind of think about that, too. It was like I didn't know if I wanted to get back into that because I had just gotten away from that you know? Right. There are some people yeah. who've, who've said that maybe Manson was abusive with younger women and not with older women. And so, but you I, was, I was, I was very young. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was 21. And also I want to make it clear too. Hmm. Some, some people have said to me, well, maybe, uh, maybe Manson treated the really famous women like Rose McGowan or Dita Von Teese, although Dita wasn't really famous when they started dating, but maybe he treated the more famous, accomplished women well, but then he treated the the women who were, were not famous or not celebrities, he treated them badly because he could. Well, I know you had a successful modeling career, but you were not a celebrity. Like you were Oh, someone... no, I was, I was not a celebrity. I, I worked all the time as a model and I was recognizable from what I was doing from work, but you're not an, a household name or anything. Like right, right. The way that the way that maybe Rose was because she had a TV show, you know, or even actually the way Evan was. You know, some people say that, well, perhaps he started off being an OK guy and then, you know, the drugs and the fame and mm -hmm. the power and all of that warped him, made him this monster. But you, it sounds like you're saying actually he's been very consistently who he is. He's been very, very consistent. I can honestly say I've seen him extremely intoxicated. And even then, he didn't behave in an irrational, angry, or mean way towards me, you know?